Okay. <laughs> Sorry, captioners. Let's go and start that. So, um, good morning and welcome to our January CCC OER webinar at the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources. I'm Una Daly, the Outreach Manager at the Consortium. And it's my pleasure to have David Littman from Pierce College and James Sousa from Phoenix College, who are both mathematics professors, here with me this morning to present on open online math homework systems. And um, I'm going to go over a few um, items here. For those of you who are new to Illuminate, um, we have um, a couple of things I wanted to point out to you. One is um, the main part of our webinar is going to occur in um, the big whiteboard, which is in the center of the screen. Um, but off on the left-hand side of the screen, you have an opportunity to chat with um, other participants by using the chat window, which is in the middle of the left-hand column. And you can um, choose to send information to people. Um, as well, you have um, a list of participants up at the top left. And uh, if you find David or James saying something particularly um, exciting to you, you can clap for them virtually uh, using the emoticons, which are directly under the participant window. Um, during this webinar, um, we are primarily going to have um, three speakers, which is myself, followed by uh, David and James. Um, if you have questions, um, please feel free to type those into the chat window, and I'll be tracking those. Um, at the end of the presentation, we will have some time for people to come on and speak live as well and ask questions. And thank you. Um, David has um, mentioned that you can call in on the phone bridge as well if you do not have a um, headset. And if you look right there in the chat window, uh, David has put in the number and the passcode. Thank you for that, David. Um, and I'd like to invite you at this time to introduce yourself in the chat window. Um, and tell me the college or institution you're with um, so that people um, will know where, where you're located. All right. Before we get started on our main uh, part of the webinar this morning, which I, I which is really going to be an exciting, an exciting um, piece today. I just want to go over a little bit about the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources for those of you who might be attending one of our webinars for the first time. Um, the Community College Consortium was set up about four and a half years ago. Um, our mission is driving awareness of open educational resources. Um, and promoting the adoption of those resources at community colleges in order to improve teaching and learning and make college more affordable. Um, one of the things that the Open Courseware Consortium is organizing um, in the next month is the Open Education Week. And uh, we invite you as um, members of the OER community to participate in this by both contributing uh, web webinars or videos um, to, um, this, to, to the website, um, and then participating live again in March. Um, if you are interested in submitting, we're asking for submission uh, commitments um, by the end of January, and I really realize that's today, but by this week, if you would like to submit something, please do so and use the URL at the top of the page here, which is openeducationweek.org slash participate. Um, finally, I wanted to let you know that CCCOER will be at a number of conferences over the next few months. Um, and if you are attending those conferences, please contact me or someone else um, on, um, on the advisory board um, and let us know you'll be there so that uh, we can touch base and um, work on um, initiatives together. And as you can see, in February, we're going to be at e-learning. March, we're going to be at innovations. In April, uh, there's the OCW Innovation and Impact Conference. And in May, in Iowa, we're going to have board members at the Association of College and Research Libraries. Um, and just really quickly, here is a list of our current advisory board members. You can see they're um, from around the country. Um, 
And we uh, welcome you um, if you would like to join the advisory board as well. Um, the more voices we get um, in this, um, the more we can achieve together. And um, at this point, um, I'm just going to briefly give you the agenda. We're going to have David uh, talking about his open online math homework system initially, and he's going to give a tour of a couple of his websites, the My Open Math, which is the um, homework system one, and his open textbook store website. And then we're going to have a James Sousa on his pre-algebra course, and finally a demo with, with David on his pre-calculus course. And then we'll have some time for Q&A. All right. It's my pleasure at this point to introduce David Littman. He's a mathematics professor at Pierce Community College in Lakewood, Washington. David has taught math for the last 12 years. Um, but in addition to that, David has been very active in both open source and um, open textbook development. He created the um, lawmaps.org um, site, which is a free open source online course management and math assessment system, which is what led to my open math. And I know David will give us a lot more details about that. But in addition to that, David is the author of at least two open textbooks on mathematics that I know of. So he's been involved in this for quite a long time and is a real um, renaissance uh, mathematics professor. So David, I turn it over to you now. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. And so I, pro I promise I'll try to keep the, uh, the sort of introductory stuff short so we can get into the fun stuff. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of tell you how this all started. Um, it started with the idea that online homework is good for learning math, that algorithmically generated problems that are auto-graded, uh, giving instant feedback to the student and unlimited practice uh, is a good thing. And I think that this was a much harder sell for me f uh, six years ago than it is now. I think a lot of people have um, you know, I've gotten used to using uh, sites that provide online homework like WebAssign or my math lab. Uh, and so I think it's a little easier of a sell now. Uh, but I was really frustrated with my students having to pay for access to these online homework systems when they bought uh, used textbooks. And uh, that's where uh, iMathis came in. So it is a web-based math assessment engine as well as a learning management system. So sort of a melding between like what WebAssign is and what Moodle is uh, in terms of features uh, that can do algorithmically generated questions, uh, automated grading of uh, expression answers, uh, accurate math and graph display, and it is open source software. I should mention it's not the only open source online math homework system. There's a couple others, WebWork and Stack, but I like to think that this one's the easiest to use. Uh, and Along with this came WAMAP. So I'm mentioning this because I'm going to end up using all these names, and I want you to know that they're all the same thing. So WAMAP is a Washington State-specific installation. What's that? OK. Uh, a Washington State-specific installation of You're the welcome to sit here and watch this. He's just talking and saying what is on here. It, it, it's, sorry, what was that? Is there a question? I, I'm sorry. Somebody else is on. Is um, they're using the phone. So uh, okay. Go ahead I'll, and do. I'll just ignore them. Uh, and so, uh, WAMAP is a Washington State installation of MyMathis. We got some grant support to create the first few thousand questions. Uh, but the really cool thing is that the content development has continued um, by faculty members because it's useful to them. Uh, I really think this is a great example of an open source community being successful because people are continuing to develop and sustain the project uh, even though funding is you know, minimal at this point. Uh, so we have about 20,000 questions now uh, from arithmetic through calculus. And on the WAMAP site, uh, we have sort of pre-built course shells for uh, 20 or so uh, both commercial and open textbooks. Now, I really wanted to make this available to everyone. And the way that it that sort of worked was through open textbooks. Um, because my big issue with open textbooks um, is that uh, they really have a hard time competing with commercial books 
until they have that set of ancillaries, like online homework is a big one in math, uh, available. Uh, and with online homework, the textbook really does serve a different purpose than it does if it is sort of mainly there for homework. So as part of the Washington Open Course Library project, uh, a co-author and I created an open pre-calculus and trig book and full course package. And naturally, we used WAMAP uh, for the homework because we had been using it in all of our other courses anyway. And we wanted a way to share this with everyone. And that's where my open math came in. So I set up this site as a free for anyone who wants to, to use installation of the iMathis software. Uh, it is, like I said, open source software. So if you want to set up your own installation of it on your own web server, you're welcome to. Uh, but this is a free hosted installation. Uh, it contains all the question content from that WAMAP site I mentioned, all 20,000 plus questions. Uh, and we have pre-built courses for several open textbooks. Uh, and it's available for instructors to use with students, or it's available for students to use for self-study. And this part, I think, is pretty cool, because it means that you know, if you have a student in your calculus class who can't remember pre-calculus and needs some refresher, you can send them here, and they can do some practice on their own with access to free textbooks and free online assessment. And so uh, it's connected with this. I was figuring, well, people need to be able to find this stuff. Uh, and that's where Open Textbook Store came in. This was intended to be just a concise listing of ready to adopt open textbooks, uh, currently math only, uh, with a little bit more information than you find at most sites. And many of them have this My Open Math homework. So now comes the fun part. Let's actually get into stuff. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop now. Hopefully, everyone can see my browser, yes? Anybody, yes? Yes, David, it looks great. OK, good. <laughs> OK. So the My Open Text, oh, sorry, the opentextbookstore.com site looks like this. It's a simple catalog uh, of books ranging from arithmetic through calculus. Uh, I've got a new calculus book coming on soon. and. Uh, you know, unlike a lot of open textbooks sites, I really tried to provide a little more information. So sort of a summary of the book, uh, a table of contents, uh, and a list of supplements available. So things like uh, this book has a solutions manual that somebody built. Uh, we have a My Open Math. <laughs> You're welcome, Barbara. Uh, we have the My Open Math uh, online homework, if that's available, uh, and video information, whatever else might be available. And there's links to uh, either you know, read the book online or to buy the book. Uh, for me, it, I, f I found that a majority of my students still want to have a printed copy of their textbook. And so it was really important for me to make sure that I was using books that were available in a printed form. Uh, and so we have uh, lots of options here, including like Barbara Olasky's Collaborative Statistics, uh, John Redden, who I noticed is also in the crowd here, uh, his Elementary Algebra from Flat World Knowledge. Uh, and some other open textbooks. So now the My Open Math site is the homework corresponding with uh, many of those books, but not all. And uh, I just want to give you, uh, there is the, the, there's a question about max cost of the print versions uh, in the chat there. There, uh, there isn't a max cost that I've set, but generally I don't include a book if there's so all the books I've listed are open books. So all of them are available online for free. Uh, for the print version, uh, I think the most expensive one is either Collaborative Statistics or the Elementary Algebra, which are around $35. Uh, most of the rest of them are under $30, um, down as low as 10 uh, No, I know there are not any geometry books yet, Todd. Uh, what you see is what we've got so far. Uh, so the My Open Math site is the online homework system. And I'm just going to give you a quick sort of platform preview. Uh, and then we're going to let, um, and then we're going to uh, let James jump in and I'll show you an actual course. So the My Open Math site does 
sort of what you expect out of a course management system. Uh, you can post text information. You can post, uh, you know, pages of, well, that's not very interesting, but pages of web uh, information. You can post links uh, out to other uh, websites. Uh, there are discussion forums. And one of the nice things about the discussion forums in, in uh, MyOpenMath is that they do support uh, mathematics. And so you can click the little put in new math here, and you can use calculator style notation uh, in order to enter your uh, answer. Uh, and when you click out of it, it instantly renders as, as you know, rendered math, and you can click it again to edit it. Uh, and there's also a little um, you know, graph thing here. So if you wanted to you know, graph some equation, you can dump some kind of you know, graph into your discussion forum as well. So we have discussion forums uh, you know, that, that enable discussion of mathematics. That's really what this system was built for, was math. But of course, the interesting part is homework, so I'll jump into that. Uh, so like any good online homework system nowadays, uh, it accepts any uh, anything that's algebraically equivalent within, uh, within reason. Um, it, it gives a nice little preview of how the computer is interpreting what they type in so that they can uh, hopefully diagnose uh, you know, any entry errors. Um, and then we'll, of course, automatically grade it. And if you give the option, they can try a similar problem. And of course, it's all algorithmically generated here. Um, you know, in addition, we got graphs. And of course, the graphs are also algorithmically generated. Uh, we can type in anything here that is, you know, algebraically equivalent to the right answer. Uh, so, you know, the student has the option of either giving the vertex form here or standard form, and it'll happily accept it. Um, there are, you know, questions where, you know, the student's going to do graphing. Uh, and, and some of the questions, you'll see this more with, uh, you know, James's demo, uh, also include, uh, you know, video links that can pop up uh, if the question authors have included those. Uh, it also has all the other sort of features you expect out of an online system. Uh, so there is a you know, you know, full-featured grade book. You can include your you know, in-class grades as well as your online grades. Uh, you can set up grade book categories, do weighted grading. Uh, one of the things I really love is if you're in the grade book and click on the average, it'll bring up uh, an item analysis. So this shows that uh, you know, the average score of my students on each of the questions. And so here I can say, well, gee, it looks like my students are really having trouble with, with this dividing fractions problem. Maybe I should spend a little more time in class on that. So we got features like that in there. And, and uh, one of the really nice things about the platform is it was really developed um, by faculty for faculty, and almost everything in here was developed because some faculty member out there said, gee, it'd be really nice if I could do blank. Um, for example, when I teach my online class, I, hate, I hated setting up dates for the next quarter because I'd have to go through and change the dates on every single item in the course. Uh, and so based on recommendations, I set up something where you can change the dates for every single assignment in the course on one page. Uh, which makes things much, much quicker. Now, like I mentioned, we do have content um, ranging from arithmetic through calculus, uh, even beyond the material that's included in the open textbooks material. Um, and it's all categorized by topic, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, so you can find additional stuff uh, pretty easily. You can say, hey, let's do algebra, factoring, trinomials. Uh, and let's, oops, oopsie, didn't mean to do, do that. Let's search. Uh, and it'll list all the questions. Um, and it's usually in the described forms of the question here. Uh, we can preview that question to see what, oops, sorry about that. Uh, preview that question to see what it's going to look like. Uh, and, and yeah, so we got a bunch of content there. Now, one of the really nice things we tried to do on, the, on this site was because we built content around open textbooks, when you go in and add a new course, it's going to ask you, do you want to use content from one of our pre-built courses? And so you can jump in here and say, yeah, I want to use 
um, you know, David's pre-calculus course, and when you hit submit, it's going to copy m my entire pre-calculus course shell uh, into your blank course, and you'll basically need to go change some dates, adjust some settings, but otherwise be ready to roll. Okay, so that is a quick platform preview. Um, any questions before I turn this over to James for a demo of the pre-algebra course? Hearing none. Uh, James, you're on. Okay, David. James, uh, shall I go ahead and introduce you briefly? Okay, sure. <laughs> Just to be symmetrical. Uh, so this is James Souza, mathematics professor at Phoenix Community College in Arizona, and we're very pleased to have James join us this morning as well as David. Um, James has taught math for 15 years in the last nine years at college level, and um, he has been using OER in his courses for the last two years, but this last semester he has switched to only using OER. So welcome, James. Thank you. So a little bit about my history. I started about two years ago making uh, math tutorial videos and hosting them on YouTube. And it wasn't until recently that I was able to combine the videos with open source textbooks and the open source online assessment program that David's been describing. So the course that I'm going to show you today is a pre-algebra. Yes? Um, could you just speak up a little bit? Sure. The course that I'm going to show you today, is that, is that better? Yes, that's much better. Okay. It's based upon the pre-algebra textbook authored by College of the Redwoods. But before I show the course, I did want to go over some of the things that I think are beneficial about using OER. Because the resources are free, to me it's amazing that the very first day of class, every student walking out of my class has access to the ebook, the online homework, and all the video lessons that, that can help them be successful in the course. Uh, because the courses are open source, we no longer have to deal with new editions of textbooks and redoing what we were doing three years before. We can every year improve the material and make it better and better for students. And the course that I'm going to show you, I believe, is flexible enough that it can be used in a traditional lecture course, in a flipped classroom, which I'm trying this semester for the first time, and also for an online or hybrid course which I'm also teaching this semester. And as David mentioned, because it's open source, anyone on the server can write questions and share questions and share question banks and share complete courses. So I think it's a great way to collaborate with colleagues. Now I'll go ahead and show my course. You guys see the course? Yes. If you can. can't see, oh, so this is the home page for my. This arithmetic. is a quick comment. If if anyone can't see the whole screen, they can resize the the little application sharing window. So what you're seeing now is the home page for my arithmetic or pre-algebra course. The first thing you'll see is the nice calendar feature at the top of the home screen. So if a student was to click on let's say February 6th, they can quickly see what assignments are due on that day. Underneath the calendar, there is a nice announcement feature. And this is, of course, the main way that I communicate with my online students. But as well as my face-to-face -face students, they can always see what happened on that day. And as David mentioned before as well, I have a discussion forum that students participate with. And then all of the course content is organized in a way that I hope facilitates student learning. As you can see, it's divided into seven modules. And these modules you can relate to as a chapter in a textbook. And so if I click on, for example, module one, again, just as a textbook, each module is divided into several sections. This module has eight sections. And then, we'll need, and then there's three layers to each section. So if I select section 1.4, prime factorization, again, every section has the same format. The first link is to the specific section from the textbook. This is 
supposed to open up as a PDF file, so students can save this or print it as needed. After the access to the textbook, students have access to the videos, and I have two types of videos. These are all hosted on YouTube. I have video lessons and I have video examples. Let me go ahead and turn up the volume here quickly. So the video lessons, for example, on divisibility rules, the student selects this link. It's going to open up the appropriate video in YouTube. The student can watch us on it. I do emphasize the use of a notebook in my classes. After they watch the lessons, they can view more examples. Again, these are all on YouTube. The video lessons are from 5 to 10 minutes. The video examples are usually 2 to 4 minutes. And let's see here. I'm going to go to a different section real quick. Okay. Uh, just give me one moment here, please. Okay, I'm going to go into section 1.1. The third option under each section is the online homework, which again uh, David described briefly. But what I've done is in about 80% of all the problems that I've assigned, I've embedded this video help option, or here it says work example one. So for this problem, if a student wasn't able to determine the correct digit in the place value, they could select this video help option. And those of you that are used to my math lab or web assign, you're probably used to this feature. Again, here's a short video clip on how to solve a similar problem. And so the entire course is laid out in exactly the same way. Again, we have in this case, seven modules. Each module has several sections, and each section contains the textbook, the videos, and the online homework. Go back to the presentation now. And as I mentioned earlier, I am trying this course in a flipped classroom, which means I expect students to uh, watch the videos as part of their homework. And then when they're in class, we either have class activities or they work individually on their homework. And I'm, I'm fortunate to be in a computer classroom. And with this flipped classroom, Students can progress at their own pace, but they must meet minimum due dates. Students are required to keep a comprehensive notebook that is graded after every test. And then every two weeks or so, students work in small groups on number sense activities uh, every one or two weeks. And then lastly, because the way this course is set up, students do have the option of testing out of a module if they already if they can master if they can show they've mastered the concepts. And therefore, it is possible for students to actually finish the course early. Again, this is a pilot that I uh, tried last semester, and I'm trying again this semester for a basic arithmetic course. And I just wanted to share some student, uh, some results from a student survey that I gave about using open source materials in the classroom. So my first question was, how many students actually knew when signing up for the course, the course materials were free? And as you can see, 85% did not know that the course actually offered uh, free materials. But looking at the second question, how, many, how important is it for you that the instructor considers the cost when selecting course materials? You know, 91% of them either rated that as a 4 or 5, or 5 being very important. So this tells you right away that our school isn't doing a great um, job of advertising which courses are being taught using open source materials. And then here I ask questions about the quality of the components of the course, again, because a lot of students are used to having um, publisher content. I wanted to see how the materials I, I was using rated against um, the publisher content. Now, you can see how the textbook didn't get a high rating. And I didn't include it in this survey, but a lot of students actually aren't reading the textbook. They're just using the videos and the online homework. So I think this is a little bit misleading. Um, but those that are reading it, I think, from what I've heard, they like it. But you can see the videos, the online homework, and just the overall course materials. Out of 33 students, a majority of them rank it uh, either a 4 or a 5. The next question I asked them was rate the different aspects of the course design. 
because again, we have the flexibility of designing the course in the way that we want. So the registration process, 27 out of 33, ranked out of 4 or 5, finding what you need in the course, and to me that was very important, 27 out of 33, 4 or 5, knowing when the work is due with that calendar, very high, uh, and so on. So the last thing I wanted to mention is I have a few comments from students here. I'm not going to read these to you. Hopefully they're large enough that you can read them if you wish. Um, but for the James? most part, it was very positive. James, could you, could you um, just bring up the volume a little bit? Sure. Actually, I think I'm done now. <laughs> and actually, why don't you read a couple of the comments? It's, uh, Is it hard to read? Uh, so it would be great if you could. OK, sure. Uh, the first comment is, this is the most understanding course I have taken for math. You make it much more easier to understand math. I like it so far. I feel that I have a lot of help with videos and such. So far, I love this class. Great program. And I'll go ahead and read one more. I am from the era of no computers for classroom work. I am trying to adapt to this, but being 49 years of age doesn't help to to like all of our work online. And I'll go ahead and read one more, I guess. This is my first year attending college. I only have two classes. And out of the two, I love the way we have the videos that teach us the material. OK, David, your turn. All right. So uh, oh, yeah. question. any questions for James before he walks away? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. We had a question in the chat room for you, James. Um, Julie asked what you require in your notebook from students. I require uh, a note section, notes from the video. I require an entry for every homework assignment that obviously shows the work. Uh, show they have a section for tests, and then they also have a section for the classwork activities. And I grade it based upon a rubric that I give to them ahead of time. All righty. Well, I guess I will jump back in now. And uh, I'm going to show you the pre-calculus course that um, a colleague and I developed as part of the Washington State Open Course Library project. Uh, and so let me jump into, into that. And so one of the cool things about this project was it was really funding us to develop a courseware package, so really a complete package of materials that we could pass off to another instructor that would really be a good starting point for teaching the course. And so in here we have you know, our course information. Uh, let me actually leave it like this. Uh, and so this includes things like, I am in the wrong course, hold on. That's the self-study version, which is for students wanting to study on their own. Here's the instructor version. And so we have a course guide for the instructor here that gives sort of an overview of what's in the course, how to use the course shell, uh, and then sort of a day-by-day -day guide. We designed this course for face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. And so this sort of outlines, you know, if you're on a 50 weeks, 50 day schedule, you know, here's sort of like, you know, suggested pacing. Here's where you could put in quizzes and handouts and worksheets and things like that. Uh, so we have this day-by-day -day guide. Um, there's a link to the full textbook, which is online. Um, you know, things like outcome alignment and stuff like that. Then for the instructor, we also have various resources, one of which is some sort of lecture guides. Uh, I call them teacher notes or lecture notes, but really what they are is uh, just uh, sets of sort of a lecture outline, like introduce notion of a function, give definition. Uh, but I tried to include a bunch of examples in here that would be different examples than are in the book. Because I know sometimes when you're preparing lecture, you're like, oh, I need an example of a function that's going to demonstrate this correctly, and it's really tedious to come up with one. Uh, and so you know, we included a bunch of examples in here that you could just use in class uh, as, a, as a starting point. 
uh, really what we were trying to do is mimic that instructor guide that comes with a lot of commercial textbooks. And all those examples that are in those lecture notes are also included in some PowerPoints if you just want to project them up so that you don't have to write them on the board. Then we also have uh, sample assessments. So for each chapter, we have a set of quizzes and some exams that could be a starting point, uh, sort of samples, uh, if you will, uh, a starting point for, for an instructor teaching the course. For the student, we have uh, you know, a sample syllabus that you could, you know, start with or not, your choice, of course, um, and, and sort of like a diagnostic introductory assignment, uh, and then, and then really to jump into the good stuff is, is the individual chapters. So we have the, the readings, uh, which is the online book. Uh, this book is also available in print form for, uh, I think it's $15 for the entire book. Um, it looks like this. It looks like a book, uh, and um, and then for you know each of the sections of the book, we have the the online homework uh, that is available. Uh, and and we the, one of the nice things about this is is because we built both the online homework and the textbook, uh, you know there's a very strong alignment between uh, the 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 two uh, between the you know the, the homework and the and the textbook uh, and then we also have some some you know class handouts and worksheets uh, that you know an instructor could use or not uh, and like all open resources the cool thing about this is you can use as much or little as you want if you want to use the whole thing you can do that if you just want to say I don't want to use any of this but gee I'd love to have a transformation practice worksheet. Uh, you know, you can jump in here and just grab that one worksheet and not use anything else. Uh, I mean, that's really the, the, the power of open. So we have that for this entire course. Uh, we also have some other stuff in here, like uh, links out to some other open uh, pre-calculus materials, like the Stitzager book, uh, and the University of Washington pre-calc book, uh, you know, Khan Academy, things like that. Uh, and then we actually employed our students to help us out here, and we had them go find uh, YouTube videos that related to the homework problems. So we have a list of, you know, a couple hundred, I think, uh, videos related to the homework problems in the online, or at least in theory related. We haven't actually gone through and vetted them all yet, uh, but we have that list. So that is the the pre-calculus course. Uh, were there any questions on that? Oh, I see one from Corey. Yeah. Um, it, so th there's there's actually two answers to your question. Yes, the open course library provides a common cartridge, but of course that doesn't include all of the online homework because the online homework sadly is not interchangeable with other systems because you know Blackboard can't do what we do. Uh, it just can't. Now, the cool thing that you can do, though, um, is if you are using Blackboard 9, you can, in My Open Math, go to Course Items Export and select a common cartridge export and create an export of the course. Now, this is going to use this really cool new thing called Learning Tools Interoperability, and it will actually embed My Open Math into Blackboard. Uh, it's still sort of a work in progress. It doesn't work perfectly yet, but I think within the next year or so, we're going to get some really good interaction uh, and interoperability going. Um, let's see, other questions. Uh, looks like, uh, Julie, uh, what about the monitoring of broken links? Um, well, in theory, in theory, the the advantage of open is like like uh, James mentioned, sort of that continuous improvement. And when people are using their materials, uh, one one hopes that they will keep them updated. And so, like I am teaching this class using my materials, uh, and if I if ever a link breaks, I'm going to be fixing it. Uh, and I know James is using his materials. So. The other thing is that, like most of the videos, I know like all of James's videos are uh, on YouTube. Uh, all the textbook links are to 
well, at least for this course, all the textbook links are to my site where I host the textbook at, so they're not going to break. Uh, James's links, I think, are to the College of Redwoods, so he may, he'll probably have to monitor those. But um, certainly, if you ever find a broken link, just let me know, and we'll try to go fix it. Um, let's see, Charlotte, uh, Angel. Uh, so, so you could bring in again everything except the o online homework uh, into Angel. Um, what I've done, because our our system is on Angel as well, our college uses Angel as well, is when my students log into their online course, because I also teach an online course using this. Um, when they log into their online course in Angel, it says Angel doesn't work for math. Go here instead. And I use uh, this other system. It's it to me. It's no different than using Web Assigner, my math lab. Uh, I mean, you have to direct them out of Angel to those systems as well because you know Angel just can't do math. Um, David, any I, other questions? David, I, I wanted to ask you. Uh, this is Bruna to clarify um, the Open Course Library um, at Washington State, of which this. Um, Pre-calculus course part of right. Yes. So the Open Course Library Project, if you haven't heard of it, was a Washington State Community College effort uh, to develop open courseware for the 81 top enrolled courses in our system. Um, the the first 40 got released recently, and they include math class wise. They include uh, beginning in intermediate algebra, um, uh, pre-calculus uh, and trig, um, statistics, and and calculus one through three, uh, and the the uh, the the beginning intermediate algebra you'll find on my open math. The pre-calculus you'll find on my open math. The calculus um, we there's there there isn't a full set of online homework developed yet, so we're going to be uh, hopefully working on that soon. Um, and then the stats is, was sort of weird, so that's not getting on here, at least right now. Uh, let me answer a couple of these other questions. Uh, Mr. Le oh, sorry. What was that? I can't hear you. Say again? Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to finish your presentation first, and then we can go to questions? Because you're getting a lot of questions here. Uh, um, sure, I only have like like one slide left anyway, so uh, let me let me do that, then we'll come back real quick. Um, so the just as it, for the pre-calculus course, we we like James did gave a student survey. Um, you know, we asked our students, "How does this textbook compare to others you've used before?" And generally, the feedback was quite positive. Uh, as you can see, a large majority of students felt that the ease of reading was the same or better. You know, ease of understanding the material was the same as or better. Writing style was good overall. Uh, generally, good feedback on the book. Um, it, interestingly, we found that uh, you know, 84% of the students read the book at least occasionally. Yay! Uh, <laughs> only 43% of it read it often. Uh, as, like I said, you know, once you're using online homework, and particularly if you have videos and stuff, my guess is a lot fewer students are actually going to be reading the book. Uh, but you know, maybe that's okay. Uh, we found that 88% of the students were reading the examples in the book at least occasionally. Uh, about half of them were watching videos at least occasionally. Uh, ha and about half of them chose to buy a printed book. Um, interestingly, this fall. When we started, you, um, about half of our department uh, adopted this book uh, and is using our textbook. Uh, we found that over 75% of them were were buying printed copies from the bookstore, uh, even after they found out that it was, you know, available for free online. And my theory is it's because it's under 20 bucks. They figure, you know, it's 20 bucks. You know, why bother taking it back? But uh, you know, I could be wrong there. Okay, so that is the end of my bit. So now let me get back to the questions. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Levinson said, "Do the students need a password to access?" The answer to that question is yes. Uh, and let me sort of show you how that works. So there's two ways that you can that students can get into stuff. Uh, one is 
as a member of your course, and then the other one is as a self-study, like totally unmonitored, no instructor. So if they want to do self-study, all they have to do is come here, click register as a new student, and say, I want to enroll in you know, pre-calculus one. And it's going to um, sign them up for this pre-calculus one self-study course, uh, which has no instructor. Now, alternatively, if you create an instructor account and create your own copy of this course, then you can uh, you'll, you'll be given a course ID, and you can specify an enrollment key, and then the student can say, oh, I'm in course, you know, 215 with the enrollment key of math is cool, uh, and, and then they'll sign up for your course instead, and then that's how you would get access to the grade book and, you know, all the record keeping that goes along with that. Uh, but it's set up so students can self-enroll uh, once you've created a course. Let's see. Uh, John, how stable is my open math? Do we need to have to worry about downtime? Uh, certainly, it's my hope and goal to have it be nice and stable, but it is a free product, and unlike a lot of free products, I don't have any funders supporting me. Uh, and so this is very much a on-the-budget operation. Uh, so I, I, th this comes with no guarantees in terms of uptime or anything. Uh, like I mentioned, it is open source software, uh, which means you can, uh, at your discretion, create, set up your own server using the same software and copy all the content off MyOpenMath onto your own server. Uh, and that way you can regulate your, the, you know, the uptime yourself. Uh, I'm also in discussions with uh, a, a commercial company, uh, XYZ Homework, um, who uses the same software about possibly providing some some hosted supported hosting for this content as well, but I don't have any official any announcements on that yet. Um, let's see, Steve uh, Acker asks, any experience and strategies for getting other instructors to use and adopt these courses? Um, the strategy that I personally have taken is um, just making sure they know about it. Um, the, I mean, what, what we've done is we've submitted open textbooks every time we have a textbook selection process. Uh, and I mean, I think that the first consideration should be quality of materials and appropriateness to the course. Um, but certainly cost and that sort of thing should be a concern as well. And uh, you know, with the pre-calculus, we ended up adopting that. Uh, there's also a lot of us who are piloting materials, and hopefully, after we have some pilot experience, um, you know, maybe that will you know change the minds of some people who are a little naysaying uh, on it. Uh, but again, I really think part of it is making it easy for people to find things, and that's why I had created this open textbook store catalog. Is you know, you go to the College Open Textbook site, which I think is one of the best sites out there, um, but it's got 500 books, and you know, is half of you know, a large majority of them are sort of like little wiki pages that you know aren't really complete, ready to use materials. And so, I really wanted to collate a list of materials that I felt were really ready to use in a classroom without needing a lot of additional um, materials. Um, Let's see, going down my list like here. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Right, then maybe James would also like to speak to that adopt question. Um, since oh, yeah, adopt. James, thoughts? Um, what was the specific question again then? Uh, how, how do we how, how, how can strategies for getting other instructors to use and adopt these materials? Uh, well, yeah, I would say, well, in my case, I'm the only one in my department currently that's taken that leap. But because it's gone so well for me, um, I've gotten permission to pilot additional courses in the same way I've taught arithmetic, beginning algebra, and trigonometry using this kind of format. And next semester, I'm teaching intermediate algebra the same way. As soon as I teach it and it goes well, I start telling everybody about it, present it in meetings, and try to get more people on board. And right now, my entire department is reviewing the O A two or the arithmetic materials, and so hopefully next next semester, anyone that wants to can use it. So it really only takes one person to take the dive into it, give it a try. I know it's going to go well, at least from my experience. 
and then just showing what showing what you're doing to other people, and more people will get on board. Thank you. Um, let's see. Jim asks, who publishes the bound textbook? Um, it depends a little bit on uh, which book you're looking at. Um, you know, like uh, John Wren's uh, Elementary Algebra is published by Flat Roll Knowledge. Um, Barbara Olowski's book, I believe, is published by uh, Coop. Um, but most of these books are, are printed through lulu.com, which is a print-on-demand site. Um, it's, it's darn cheap, which is why I love it. Um, I mean, we have a 500-page book that we can get printed for 15 bucks, um, you know, the, the, our pre-calculus book. Um, the, the, uh, yeah, and so that, that's what prints them. Uh, Shane, what can other math professors contribute to this open textbook project? Anything that you want. Uh, basically, um, if you end up using any of this material, you are, uh, you know, didn't you come up with something cool? Just, you know, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, say, hey, I came up with this cool stuff. Um, you know, can we share this? And one of the things I, I would like to do is try to um, compile a uh, you know, add add to these open course shells uh, additional materials. So, like for our pre-calculus course, you know, we have some other um, instructors teaching out of it, and they're coming up with um, the, 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 they're coming up with new worksheets and handouts. And as they give those to me, I'm going to add them to the shell so that they're available for other people. Now, if you find a totally new open textbook that we don't already have material for and you want to build material for it, uh, you're very much welcome to do that as well. Uh, one of the cool things about my open math is because we have all that content, uh, it's easy to sort of repurpose it to another textbook. Um, so for example, like I was teaching uh, beginning algebra this quarter, uh, and I'm using uh, Tyler Wallace's intermediate, uh, beginning in intermediate algebra, but there was a section that I didn't have any content for that was sort of review material, so I went and grabbed some stuff out of, uh, I grabbed some stuff out of uh, James's uh, arithmetic uh, course uh, so that I would have more material. Let's see, were there other questions? What about professors in other subjects? Uh, the I would love to list books from other subjects. I just don't know about other subjects, so I haven't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would just add that a good place to start would be the textbook site, um, and you can um, you can um, search by subject area. You can also contact me for additional information if you would like some pictures to other um, communities of practice on OER. Um, let's see, Alfred, uh, are the available materials compliant or going to be with the upcoming Common Core Standards? Um, because I'm at a community college and I'm a community college instructor, I know very little about the Common Core Standards. I know that there's a few people out there, I, if Shane's who I think he is, I think he's one of them, uh, who is interested in uh, connecting these materials with the Common Core Standards, and certainly I would love to see that happen. Um, it just, you know, somebody's going to have to do it, and and I, you know, I don't know how that's going to happen. And thanks, Corey, for the information on the Stitt Zager book. That is a, uh, you know, another book that I list on the site here. It's another pre-calculus book. Um, we do not have content on my open math for them because they have content on uh, WebAssign, I believe. Um, and so they already have an online homework. Uh, you know, set up for that book. Oh, um, I know that people are still asking questions. Um, I'll try to wipe for again. Let's see. One part. Um, 
ask you a question about um, about um, about the books that you showed, David, um, and those were from David's website, um, opentextbookstore.com. Um, and David was not in the slideshow at the time. He was showing you um, from his web browser on his desktop, but you can go directly to that um, link, and it's, um, I put that in the chat window a little further up. You can go directly to the catalog there. Yeah, and and yeah, and then from that site yes, you can link you. out to any of those of those books. Um, we still have a, um, a five more minutes um, of time on the webinar, and um, so please do keep putting in your questions and so forth. I want to thank everyone for attending. Um, at the bottom here of this slide is the contact information for David. James and myself, if I can be of any um, help um, on pointing you at, at um, more topics outside of math as well. Um, I wanted to mention that um, we will be having a February CCPOER webinar, and that one is on English composition. We will have the folks from writingcommons.org, um, which is an open textbook community for college level writers, uh, and they're at the University of Southern Florida. So. Save the date if you can, and um, webinar and uh, next and February's as well will be archived so that for folks who can't attend in person, you can do it next during the archive. And I'll turn this back over for questions. Uh, Corey asked about where the recording will be posted. Uh, there will be a it will be in the CCC Confer system, but it also will be posted to the OER Consortium.org site and College Open Textbook. And I'll type those in the chat window for you. And uh, just just as a sort of final comment, if you do have any questions, by all means, you know, just feel free to shoot me an email and ask. Uh, and you know, feel free to play around uh, on the on my open math site. I mean, that's sort of what I created it for, is so you know, people can play around and and you know, see what it's all about. Thank you, Steve, for coming from Ohio. Um, and, I, and I do want to thank um, David and James for putting in the time to um, do this presentation and share this really exciting information with you. Um, James didn't get a chance to talk too much about the flipped classroom, but I think um, many of us are looking at that new pedagogical technique, and it's a really very exciting way to teach students and um, to help students drive their own learning. So. Um, James, I think, is uh, very happy to answer uh, questions over email about that as well. I sure. hope that's true, James. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, it, James, if you have a few minutes, or we're just finishing up, and if we're not getting too many questions, maybe you would like to tell people a little bit about the flipped classroom, because it's still a relatively new technique. Uh, yes, it is. Like I said, I, I tried it for the first time last semester, and as I mentioned, the uh, students who are spending their homework watching video lessons and taking notes, and then coming to class and working on either individual homework or, or classroom activities. And it, it is kind of strange at first, but I do, I do still open the course with a what I call a mini lesson or a 10 or 15 minute review of the videos that they should have watched the night before. And then again, I'm kind of walking around the classroom helping small groups or helping individuals. And the nice thing about it that I like is that I'm able to make contact with every single student each class, so I can, you know, they know that I care about where they are. Um, it's a nice way of kind of able to counsel them as well as teach them mathematics. And what I found is that, you know, students that kind of sit next to each other, they end up kind of forming a small team and wanting to help each other learn the concepts. And so a lot of times I'll see students helping students, um, which also is all a great thing to see. Uh, I did have some statistics about it. You know, we only had one section last semester. It was 25 students, and my retention was, which isn't a very good sample, of course, because we have like 35 sections, um, but my 
success rate, senior better, was about 10% higher than the average, but again, probably not display significant. So I'm looking forward to, you know, comparing it again to this semester because I have um, four other colleagues teaching several, seven other sections of the same format, but I'm the only one using the OER materials. They're using a publisher content. So it won't be a, a true comparison, but again, it'll be um, a nice a nice way to compare data to the average lecture class. That will be exciting to see. Yeah. Actually. Um, go ahead, David. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I mean, since we're talking about that sort of thing, uh, if, if you know, if, if anyone wants to see it, um, maybe I'll show the um, the other algebra class that we have. Uh, on my open math as well, which Tyler Wallace for the Open Course Library project created, uh, which he uses for both hybrid and online. And I don't know if he's doing flipped with it or not, but uh, both hybrid on, and online. Uh, the way that he has it set up, um, you know, the course is divided into modules, and uh, you know, each module then is broken down into smaller groups. And so, like you know, the topic sort of operations. He has these set up with conditional release. Um, I don't have it displaying that way right now, but he has it set up so that like you have to do the first uh, assignment before the second one shows up, before the next one shows up, before the next one shows up, before the next one shows up. Uh, and so, like the first of these, uh, you know, has a um, you know a little video that shows a couple examples, and then two questions that relate directly to the examples that are in the video. Uh, so it's sort of watch the video, make sure that you know how to do it. Uh, and on his website uh, for the book, he has um, a, a a printed workbook that also aligns with these videos, where the students can like take notes on the videos as they watch them, uh, if you want to use that. And so it walks them through, uh, you know, various levels of like order of operations. Again, watch a video, answer a couple questions based on those videos. Uh, and then, then there is sort of like a mixed homework, uh, you know, multiple problem homework after that. Uh, so he has students work through, you know, these various topics, and then at the end of the module there is a test. Uh, and so he can he has students work on this more in that Emporium model style, I think, um, where students are working through this kind of at their own pace, and the instructor can go around and work individually with them. So I just thought that might be interesting to some people. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, David. At this point, I'm going to close the webinar, the official part, by stopping the recording. But um, you're welcome to uh, send in a few more questions over the chat window if, you're, if you still have some. And thanks again to everyone.